We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin. Do you have tough messes that ordinary cleaners just can't handle? Maybe you should contact the best cleaner in the business. And speaking of cleaning up messes, we have reports of a happy ending to a famous fairy tale. Let's turn things over to our correspondents, Dee Marmara and Philip E. Dixon. There's a trail of blood droplets on Mrs. Fridkin's driveway when I arrive on Thursday morning carrying my bucket of cleaning supplies. They mow the lawns on Wednesdays, per the HOA, and the embroidered edge of grass clippings has begun to wilt on the concrete. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall because somebody pushed him. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again, so they ate him instead. What inspired you to write this particular story? Because I, that question has been just burning away in the back of my mind. <laughs> the Humpty Dumpty nursery rhyme uh, I've, I've never been satisfied with uh, because the, the most basic version there, uh, you know, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. We don't know why. And then all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put them back together again. Um, well, why not? And so in the original, you know, actual nursery rhyme, it doesn't specify Humpty as this big, huge egg that looks like my head currently. And, you know, but the literature always was paired with, um, uh, you know, the art that depicted him as this huge egg, which I don't know why, but, you know, ran with it. So, um, you know, so I was never satisfied with that. Why did he fall? Why couldn't they put him back together again? If they can't, what do they do with him? Because he's a huge giant egg and he's just laying there, uh, you know, broken. Well, uh, I don't know, to me, that just seemed kind of like a waste. So, um, nom, nom, nom. It sounds, it sounded like, and without spoiling things, since this is in the first paragraph, that the theme of sort of cannibalism is sort of a through line in your story. I think just the the nature of kind of dealing with the body, dealing with food, dealing with uh, all of these sorts of things, there's a sort of um, or a kind of fascination with it. It's, it's creeped up in some of my other stories that have been published. And, and um, so uh, I think... Yeah, there's just a medicated part of me that, that requires that exploration and some of the stories. And that was one of the things I actually really appreciated appreciated about the prose is that it was very visceral. It had that it makes you hungry, but also grosses you out at the same time. If that makes sense. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. With your story, I'm curious. You know, what was the genesis of of your piece? So that's a kind of an interesting story. I um, used to clean houses. And before that, my mother used to clean houses. And she would take me along. Um, even after she went back to school um, for a while, she would take me along. She kept a few clients. And so we would go in and we would clean these houses. And there's I think sometimes a very different perspective that you get when you're going into someone's house to clean it. Um, you're seeing parts of it that guests don't necessarily see. And I was sort of monkeying around with the idea of, um, you know, sort of something supernatural that was related to a housekeeper. And I thought, well, you know, what about somebody who can clean up think so that other people cannot see um one of the the recollections that i have years from years and years ago is going into a house with my mother and her looking up on the wall you know this big giant white wall and saying like oh look they missed the handprints and you know these are things that oftentimes you just things you don't even notice in houses and yeah. i thought you know what about bloody handprints those are you know those are something that you always see and you know in horror and supernatural like ghost horror and stuff but the main character the protagonist is not the you know is not really the one directly interacting with the supernatural except in that very specific way i liked the idea of playing around with um sort of the residue that ghosts can leave behind um but again it's you're it's you're interacting with it in that very sort of limited place. This is not the person who's performing the exorcism or helping the spirit to move on or something. This is somebody who's just cleaning up after them. The house cleaning, housekeeping element that um, is, I think, universal connection there. I think for the vast majority of readers, that's something that they're really going to be able to recognize and um, use as a great entrance into the story because we all hopefully cleaned. I was curious to know um, 
what kind of horror do you like to read? Lately, I've been reading a lot of flash fiction myself, just because as um, as an English professor, I also teach literature, and I created a flash fiction uh, course specifically with uh, science fiction, fantasy, and horror. And so a lot of the reading I've been doing lately has been uh, the flash fiction-oriented stuff, specifically under 1,000 words rather than under 1,500. Um, and so a lot of the stories... Um, there uh, for every 15 stories or so that I read, uh, um, one would be a winner for uh, the, the class um, in terms of having some literary themes. So uh, if I were to pick a particular author that's caught my attention recently, I'd say Stephen Graham Jones. Um, uh, I know he's, I haven't gotten around to My Heart as a Chainsaw yet, but uh, I have read um, Mannequin, which I thought was hilarious. It's really nice to know that people are still sort of digging into that art of the short story and art of flash fiction um, more. Um, I feel like at least in the last few years, there's been a lot of emphasis kind of on length. There's, you know, it's like how much, like how big a novel can you write? But to me, it's very interesting to see sort of how much story you can pack into a very small space. I just finished uh, The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker, and which I had been thinking about reading for a very long time, but I hadn't. And I really enjoyed it, actually. I had read uh, I had read one of Clive Barker's young adult, like child novels, Aberat, uh, years and years ago. Like I picked it up in a bin in Australia one time and uh, it, it I actually really, really loved it. And I was like, oh, I need to read another book by him. And so it was that one, um, but it was it was very enjoyable. It was really also great to look at it structurally and see how he had paced it. Yeah, have you have you read his books of blood? I have not yet, but I've been thinking about getting them. Ah, uh, the uh, yes, just go do that.